Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to paint a Death Guard Plague Marine for Warhammer 40k. This is one of the new models as you can see and I have to say they look pretty awesome. I think this is a relatively easy color scheme to paint and you can get away with making a few mistakes here and there because uh, Plague Marines are not supposed to look very clean. And this allows you to have a more relaxed uh, color scheme and uh, way of painting these guys. Thank you very much to Jack Penman for sending me the models to make this video. And I'm really happy that I got it just in time for the Death Guard Codex release. I'm going to start by priming the model in gray. For that, I'm going to use Vallejo Surface Primer Gray through an airbrush. You can use any primer that you like. I would recommend using this, or even you can use Death Guard Green Spray so that you don't need to do the base coat. The first step is going to be undercoat the whole model with Death Guard Green. Just make sure to thin down the color with a little bit of water and give it a couple coats around the model. I didn't feel this color covered too well so you definitely need a couple coats of this paint uh, before moving on but uh, make sure to let them dry in between each coat and if you're going to use any other primer I would just suggest to stay with the gray or white because it's going to be easier to Cover. I don't know how well this color will cover over black, uh, but being a base base paint, it should have enough uh, opacity to cover over black, but I haven't tried it myself. Next, I'm going to use Balthazar Gold, and with this color, I'm going to base coat all of the places that I want to be brass. Uh, these details are scattered around the armor, so take your time in finding all of them. Uh, because these uh, models have a lot of detail and you might miss some of them. If you do, it's not a big deal. You can come back later and paint them. But really carefully, try to uh, avoid all of the places there's, that should be uh, green and just paint these with this color. For some areas, I like to use this uh, size 2 brush. It's very good because it holds a lot of paint and it's easier to paint bigger areas. But also you can get away with using just a small detailed brush to paint most of uh, the model. Next I'm going to use Lead Belcher and with this color I'm going to base coat all of the places that are going to be silver. And these aren't too many, this is, includes just the weapon, bits of the weapon and uh, the little uh, bomb that he's carrying on his side. Make sure to thin down metallics well. Uh, if you thin them too much, metallic flakes start floating around the paint. And that's not good because uh, it means that it's too thin and they might flow into other places where you not, don't want to paint. Uh, just thin them a little bit so they're not too th tacky because they become uh, very, uh, very thick and difficult to work with. Next, I'm going to start painting with black. This is model color black. I like this color a lot. You can use Abaddon black instead. Uh, but I'm going to use this color to paint all of the places that I want to be black. This includes the the bomb uh, places on the in between the armor joints and the the stock of the gun and places like that. You can decide to paint any other places on black if you want. Uh, but these are the standard colors that are painted on the art of these uh, new models. Once that's done, I'm going to move on and use Sandry Dust. With this color, I'm going to base coat all of the places that are going to be bone. There's not too many. It's only these horns on the side of the shoulder pad here and a little skull on the other shoulder pad. And if you see any other bone bits or places that you would like to look uh, painted as bone, uh, you can base coat them with this color as well. At this stage where we are blocking all the colors, it's only important that you uh, paint uh, accurately and not paint over other colors that you shouldn't. Uh, the wash is going to bring them together, you don't need to worry too much about that. Next comes the Agrax Earthshade and this is a wash that I'm going to use all over the model. All of the colors that we applied so far need a wash of this color uh, to go into their recesses, so I'm going to do that. And very carefully, yep, being careful not to uh, add a lot of pools around the bottle, just make sure to spread it around and that it gets into the cracks and crevices and make sure to shade pretty much the whole model. Uh, the other places that we haven't painted we're going, are going to need a different wash. So it's not uh, important if you wash them by accident or paint them with other colors. I don't thin down the wash at all. I just uh, use it as it comes from the pot and make sure to shake it well before you use it. 
Next, I'm going to use Buckman's Glow, and with this color I'm going to start base coating all of the places that are going to be fleshy tentacles and things like that. I left that at the end because they're regularly on top of other things, so it's easier to paint them afterwards, and now that the wash is done for the other colors, it's easy just to come and pick them up. And I'm using a fine detail brush, or a small layer brush I think it's called now. Then very carefully with thin paint, I'm starting to paint all of these. Next, I'm going to use Screamer Pink, and with this color I'm going to paint all of the cloth around the model. In this particular model, it's only a loincloth in between his legs, and it's uh, very easy to pick up. Just uh, make sure to avoid all of the other places that you already painted, and have a thin down color so it doesn't uh, cover detail. Once that's done, I'm going to use Drukai Violet and with this color I'm going to wash both places that we painted so far which is the flesh and the loincloth. Um, here I'm going to use a couple coats of this on the flesh because I want it to go very purple almost uh, turning it itself very close to the screamer pink uh, So, but make sure to give it a couple coats, let them dry, give it one coat, let it dry, give it a second coat and if you want a third coat, you can go with that, but I think I gave it two, only in special places where I didn't see the color turn out as uh, bright as I wanted, I give it an extra wash. Next, with Death Card Green, I'm going to start cleaning up the model, and you don't need to do this, because the model looks very good as it is, uh, but I'm going to give it a quick uh, cleanup on the places that are more open on the armor, where there is no detail at all just to bring back the color a little bit because I don't like the way the wash turns everything a little bit too matte it dulls them down, dulls the color down and it looks a little bit dusty or frosty and I don't like that a lot and I'm going to clean up next I'm going to use Ushapti Bone and with this color I'm going to highlight all of the bone and I'm also going to edge highlight all of the green around the armor for the bone in the Shoulder pad on the right, I'm going to just feather in this color on the top uh, half part of each of the horns and all of the sharpest edges. And also I'm going to use it in all of the sharpest edges of the armor. And this is all the, the armor needs in my opinion. This is a very good highlight, a very good stark uh, contrast that looks very good from afar. And just try to do as thin as a highlight on the edges as you can. Try to use the side of the brush where you are able to. This Ushapti bone looks very good with this uh, kind of putrid kind of green that you're looking for. The bone look, makes it look a little bit more uh, decayed. Next I'm going to use Screaming Skull and with this color I'm going to give a second highlight only to the bone parts. The armor I'm going to leave it as it is. And this is going to cover almost half of uh, the highlighted part that we highlighted the uh, past uh, step. And on the armor, you could, if you want, to give it an, an extreme highlight, but it's, it really doesn't need it, in my opinion. Next, I'm using Stormhost Silver, and with this color, I'm going to edge highlight all of the places that are going to be silver around the model, leaving the uh, washed silver as it is. And I'm just going to pick up all of the edges that I can, as, fine, as finely as I can. And also, don't forget to uh, pick up those uh, rivets around the armor, as I'm doing here. Uh, these uh, need a little bit of patience and have just the right amount of paint on the tip of your brush uh, to not paint over the places that are already uh, painted. Next I'm going to use Dark Reaper and with this color I'm going to edge highlight all of the black around the model. This color looks very good on black uh, but it's a cool black instead of a gray, uh, using a gray to highlight black. Uh, this is a different way to highlight black that looks very good. Uh, but if you wanted to go with gray, you can use Eshing Gray instead of Dark Reaper in this step. If paint is drying on you, you can use a little bit of drying retarder, and this is going to help you with your edge highlights. Next, I'm going to use Downstone, and with this color I'm going to give an extreme highlight to the black, and just concentrating on the places that are sharpest on the black, and trying to make a, a thinner edge highlight on these places only on the corners. And this is going to give it a very popping uh, highlight on these uh, areas that is going to look very good. And make sure to concentrate on the sharpest edges and leave a little bit of the blue behind. Next I'm going to use Bright Bronze from Ballyho Game Color. 
and this is going to be an edge highlight on all of the brass parts around the model uh, just uh, avoiding uh, big parts that are uh, flat and trying to keep pick up all of the edges only and I love I love how this color looks it's very bright and it's very striking where you use when you use it uh, and it's a very, it's a very nice uh, pretty color if you wanted to use it uh, I would recommend it a lot uh, the equivalent from uh, Citadel I think is going to be Psychorix bronze it's also pretty good but I had I have had uh, some uh, batches of that color that don't work very well next I'm going to co go back to screamer pink and with this color I'm going to highlight again uh, the loincloth of the model just trying to concentrate it on the raised folds of the cloth and uh, just uh, giving a little clean up and leaving the recesses as they are next with pink horror I'm going to edge highlight all of these places that are going to be uh, screamer pink and leaving all of the rest as it is just trying to pick up all of these uh, sharpest edges and little holes and stuff to give it an extra highlight that looks very good Once it's done, I'm going to go back to using Bugman's Glow. And with this color, I'm going to highlight all of the fleshy parts around the model, all of the tentacles. And I want to keep as much as the purple color behind because this looks like sore skin and it looks very good. And it looks like the pictures on the website and on the art of these models. So I'm going to try to copy that. And I'm only doing an edge highlight, but a very kind of thick edge highlight on uh, most of the prominent edges around the flesh and I'm going to pick the tips of the tentacles as well. Once that's done I'm going to finish it up with Kislev Flesh and with this color I'm only going to pick the sharpest uh, edges on the skin and the little bumps and things like that and the very tips of the tentacles. Uh, this is a very easy step just trying to be a little bit neater and cleaner and just try to pick these uh, sharpest places uh, to give it an extra highlight. I'm going to conclude the model here because I think this is uh, as close as I could to the pictures of the model but you can still do weathering and rust effects and things like that that would look very good on Plague Marines but this is going to be all that I'm going to do for the purposes of this video. And this is the finished model. I have to say I had a lot of fun painting this model and it's very easy to paint in my opinion. You can get away with being a little bit sloppy because Nurgle is a lot, it's all about the decay and being messy and stuff so if you don't get as clean as a paint job I'm sure it's gonna look very good. And Nurgle can look a little bit scary on painting different stuff but once you know what you're doing and you have a good recipe to paint uh, it's, uh, it goes by very easy and it's very fun. So that's it, I hope you found this video entertaining and helpful and that you enjoyed watching it and that it hopefully helps you when painting your Plague Marines. If you have any questions or suggestions for other painting videos, you can leave them on the comment section below. If you like this video, please like it, comment on it and subscribe to the channel to see more videos. YouTube is not going to show you all of my videos every time I upload, sometimes you can miss a few of them, so if you don't want to miss any of them, Please click the notification bell on the bottom of the screen so that you get notified each time and uh, that you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. You stayed great. Thank you very much for supporting my channel and if you would like to become a patron, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Your contributions help pay for my work and keeps the channel going. A single dollar a month is more than enough and you can cancel at any time. If you can't, don't worry, you can support my channel by simply watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.